Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this morning, we have a suspend trade in our shares, and we are now making an announcement on a major corporate restructuring exercise for SPH. I have a rather lengthy statement to make to all of you uh, because the matter is quite complex. So I want to start off by begging your indulgence and patience to let me uh, go through with my statement. Since its formation in 1984, SPH with its new title, has served as a timely, trusted, and credible source of news and information for Singaporeans and audience beyond our shores. Today, when information and data are treated as new currency, there is growing recognition that uh, responsible and high-quality journalism plays an important role in every functioning and successful society. Reliable journalism is respected as a public good and increasingly valuable as we cope with information overload and the 24-7 deluge of online falsehood. Our publication, The Straits Times, Lian He Chao Pao, Berita Harin and Tamil Murasu, and The Business Times are seen as reliable papers of record. This trust and reputation did not happen by chance. SPH has assiduously nurtured quality journalism and invested resources to develop our media business. These efforts help us to stay relevant to our audience as media consumption habits change dramatically with the swing towards digital access and content. Recognizing that the growth and continued engagement of new audiences would be in the fiercely contested digital arena, SPH has invested significantly in digital capabilities to introduce new products, strengthen content, and increase audience engagement. Over the past five years, SPH investments in technology, product development, and data analytics, data analytic talents has grown by 48%, amounting to more than $20 million a year. We have also invested in digital content production and audience development talent in the newsroom, which amount to about $35 million over the same five-year period. Beyond investing in manpower, SPH has also increased its spending to build up new consumer-facing digital platforms and products, averaging more than $20 million a year over the past five years. These investments have strengthened our newsroom's digital content creation capability, product quality, as well as ability to design, develop, and monetize media content and products across different platforms. As a result of this digital transformation effort, SPH total audience across our publications has grown significantly. The average monthly unique audience of all SPH titles over the past two years have nearly doubled to 28 million. This is the largest audience SBH has, had, has ever had in its history and remarkable if you think of the small domestic market in Singapore. Our digital titles have also received numerous international accolades, including annual awards by industry associations such as the World Association of News Publisher, Juan Ifra, and the International News Media Association, INMA. Resources are also ploughed into growing new revenues, new revenue streams beyond advertising, which will include building digital circulation capabilities to drive subscriptions. With strong content offering, innovative and customer-centric products such as SPH News Tablet, digital circulation grew strongly and surpassed print circulation last year. However, digital disruption continues to challenge the media industry. This is not unique to Singapore or to SPH. Globally, traditional media organizations have seen revenues falling for the past decade as competition for digital revenue has intensified, especially in the advertising space where scale is important. Non-journalistic platforms such as search engines 
social media network and e-commerce have emerged as dominant players in the advertising market, with the rare exception of a few titles with international audience such as the New York Times, the growth in audience and subscription revenue has not been able to overcome the decline in advertising revenue. This trend has adversely impacted the financials of SPH Media business. Over the past five years, SPH Media's operating revenue has halved, driven largely by the drop in print advertising and print subscription revenues. Disruption caused by COVID-19 have exacerbated the decline in advertising revenues as companies cut back on spending. In 2020, SPH Media posted its first ever loss of $11.4 million for the financial year ended 31st August 2020. And it would have been a much deeper loss if not for the government job support scheme. For the six months ended 28 February 2021, Profit before tax for SPH Media fell 71% to 3.1 million compared to the same period last year. Again, if not for the JSS grant, SPH Media would have incurred a pre tax loss of $9.7 million. SPH has carried out several cost management exercises as part of our effort to maintain media profitability. In recent years, we have right-sized the media operations in the sales and back-end support function and cut costs without affecting our media capabilities. There remains little scope for further cost cut without impairing the ability to maintain quality journalism. Looking ahead, advertising revenue is expected to continue its secular decline at a similar pace to the last five years and is unlikely to rebound post-COVID-19. The growth in digital advertising revenue will not make up for the drop in print advertising. While we have had reasonable success in growing digital subscription, further growth is likely to be challenging given the intense competition and the small size of our domestic market. As a result, the losses we have seen for SPH Media are likely to continue and widen. SPH Media's digital transformation journey is an ongoing challenge. More investments in digital talent and new technology will be required to strengthen our digital content creation and product development capabilities. This investment will also need more time to begin to show results. The fundamental issue that needs to be addressed is therefore this. The long-term viability of SPH Media in its present structure and subjected to market pressure. The media business is expected to remain loss-making and to face severe financial challenges over the next few years. SPH shareholders are not likely to tolerate the continued negative impact that the media business has on the company's financial prospects. On the other hand, we cannot allow a functioning, trusted and respected, respected media organisation to be whittled down over time by market pressure and commercial constraints. It is therefore clear that being part of a publicly listed company is no longer a tenable model for SPH Media. A new funding model is needed for SPH Media to remain financially sound and functionally robust in the long run. SPH has a critical mission of serving several key stakeholders in Singapore. The public who read our news products, our shareholders, our staff, as well as our business partners. SPH is a credible and trusted source of quality news and information to the public. In the context of Singapore's multiracial society, SPH serves a crucial function by providing news and information in vernacular languages to serve Singapore's diverse ethnic communities. As a key player in the media industry, SPH also plays a vital role in preserving media diversity in Singapore, which enables the public to have more variety and choices of quality local content 
across different platforms, languages and formats. Considering these important roles and functions of SPH media, options such as winding up or selling the media business are not options for the group, as either options will severely impact public access to quality news and critical information, as well as undermine media diversity and competition in Singapore. Both options would also require regulatory approval. As part of its strategic review, the group is proposing to restructure itself with SPH Media being placed under a separate entity, which will be not-for-profit in that its income and property will be applied solely towards the promotion of the object of the company set forth in its constitution. SPH Media will then be freed from the expectations of shareholders for a fair financial return and regular dividends. Its operating revenue can be reinvested in the media operation instead. Transferring the media business out of SPH listed entity will also open up opportunity for it to seek funding from other public and private parties which have a shared interest in supporting local quality journalism and credible information in public interest. Accordingly, SPH approached the Ministry of Communications and Information to appraise them of the financial challenges of the media business and the proposal to restructure its media business into a wholly owned subsidiary. The subsidiary will subsequently be transferred to a company limited by guarantee for a nominal sum, subjected to shareholders' approval. MCI, which regulates SPH under the Newspaper and Printing Presses Act, or NPPA, has indicated its support for this proposal. In the process of this restructuring, the entire media-related re businesses of SPH, including relevant employees and subsidiaries, and physical assets like New Centre and Print Centre, along with their respective leaseholds, as well as related intellectual property and information technology assets, will be transferred to a newly created subsidiary. SPH will also be capitalising the subsidiary by injecting $80 million in cash and $30 million worth of SPH share and SPH REITs unit, as well as its stake in Asia One, DC Frontier, Target Media and Singapore Media Exchange. This CLG model that we are proposing is neither new nor radical. In fact, many well-known and respected news organisations around the world have already moved in this direction with media trusts and foundations set up to support and uphold credible media titles. Some examples worth citing include The Guardian in the United Kingdom, which has been controlled by the Scots Trust since 1936. In Germany, the largest media conglomerate, Bertelsmann, number one in Europe and one of the largest media companies in the world, is owned by the Bertelsmann Foundation. In France, which France, the leading daily in terms of circulation, has been owned by a non-profit organization since the early 90s. In the United States, ProPublica, a Pulitzer Prize-winning site, was created in 2008 as a public trust. There is also the Philadelphia Inquirer, which is owned by the Lanfest Institute, and the Tampa Bay Times, owned by the Pointer Institute. So these are good examples and precedents. With the resources that SPH is providing up front, and the prospects for public-private partnership funding going forward, we anticipate that SPH Media will have a more sustainable financial future. It will have the resources to focus on the transformation efforts and quality journalism, as well as to invest in talent and new technology to strengthen its digital capabilities. This will ensure that the public will continue to benefit from quality information and credible news from trusted media titles and newsroom across different platforms and also in vernacular languages. The transfer of SPH Media to a CLG will also help to preserve 
a diverse and competitive media landscape in Singapore. Having competition among key players in the domestic media market will spur innovation and creativity, thus stimulating more variety in content and enabling the public to have better choices of, for better choices of quality content that cater to the local audience. With the restructuring of SPH Media, MCI has also given its in-principle approval for the shareholding and other relevant restrictions under the NPPA to be lifted from the listed company after transfer of SPH Media to the CLG following shareholders' approval. Without the encumbrance of the NPPA, SPH will have greater financial flexibility to tailor its capital and shareholding structure to pursue strategic growth opportunity across its other businesses and to maximise return for shareholders. In our strategic review, we have carefully considered our options, weighing up the interests of each of our critical stakeholders, as well as interests of the Singapore community as a whole. We have concluded that on balance, restructuring SPH media and transferring it to a CLG is the best and most appropriate option for all stakeholders. Now let me conclude with our former President S.R. Naden's account of advice given to him when he was appointed Executive Chairman of the Straits Times Press a few years before the formation of SPH. Before taking up his appointment, Mr. Naden met with then Prime Minister Mr. Lee Kuan Yew. As Mr. Naden was leaving, Mr. Lee said, and I quote, Naden, I'm giving you the Straits Times. It has 150 years of history. It has been a good paper. It is like a bowl of China. If you, can br if you break it, I can piece it together, but it will never be the same. Try not to destroy it, unquote. More than four decades on, Mr. Lee's words of advice still ring true. Today, in addition, it's not just the future of the Straits Times that is at stake. It is also the future of all of SPH Media's highly regarded publications working across platform in a new media age. This restructuring is a carefully considered evolution of Singapore's media model to ensure that we safeguard this precious China for future generations. We are creating a new home for this fine China bowl. We are confident that in this new home, our media, which has served our society over the decades, will continue to enjoy the care, nourishment and support that they need from our society in, if they are to thrive. This will ensure that our long-standing media titles will be able to continue serving our nation for a long time to come. Thank you.